It is time once again for the real people multi-game solitaire mega tournament. Cupid doll finds herself essentially trapped in this river at this river bank right here. She's down to one movement point and she can't go through this rough to kind of the nearest safe spot, which is this place here where Junior is, um, because she doesn't have enough movement to get through there, which doesn't quite make sense to me. It seems like there should be a rule where if you can't move, you can move one, but that's not the nature of this game. So she kind of just has to sit there and wait for her life levels to go up and then try to make it through to there. But I think she's going to have to sit there for a long time in order for that to happen at the, all the while she's starving. Um, everyone else is doing all right. Chinky's ready to move again. He, he kind of got replenished, well-fed Chinky. And our robots, uh, we have our Hellabot here sitting in this valley. The, um, what's that called? Hoverbot is approaching and the Carbot is about ready to shoot. Actually, I think the tank bot's gonna shoot first and then the Carbot. And there we go. Dancing Bear is using chemical rockets against the Carbot. Uh, is it called, oh no, it's called a Robocar, sorry. I always forget when it's bot and when it's robo. I guess the car and the tank are both robo and everything else is bot. Okay, so 2d6. Oh, and she's trying to paint the car bot, the robo car. And she managed to paint the robo car and the robo car is not silvered. So that painting is gonna stay until the robo car can get into some water. And I'm not gonna count these little puddles that the survivors use. She has to get to the river. The Robocar is also using chemical rockets, funnily enough, uh, but 3D6 to try and disable two items on the Hoverbot here. Uh, the Hoverbot silhouette is five, but the Hoverbot is gonna reveal this hollow blur to make it six. Wow, three fives. So those all get re-rolled. So it's definitely a hit. I don't know why I have to re-roll. Um, that's an impressive roll, but it's not doing damage. It's going to disable two things. Um, so Tinkerbell is going to have to decide what to disable. The Robocar is ramming with a super steel ram the Hoverbot right now. So let's roll. Now what this die roll is going to mean is the amount of damage that is done to both, but the Robocar gets to reduce it. Two, and it reduces it by two, so it does zero. And the Hoverbot has to take that, that two points of damage to whatever these die roll are. So five, which will re-roll, five will re-roll, one and zero. So the Hoverbot takes a damage here and to its hollow blur. I'm sorry, it was actually to its drivetrain and not here, not here. Tinkerbell is attacking back with an EMP blaster. Now since it's charged, it's gonna do double dice and that's gonna be a burst of um, disables. So it could disable pretty much everything the Robocar has, depending, because it's gonna be six dice total. We roll the five. That's a zero. So zero and three are disabled, as well as two, four, and zero. So two, four, zero, three are all disabled on the Robocar. That's rough. Dancing Bear is shooting with her guided missile at the Robocar. The Robocar is painted, and so it's going to be um, treated as a silhouette of one, which is very rough on the Robocar, which has had pretty much everything get disabled other than its super steel ram. So here we go. That's gonna be a damage to the three system which is the chemical rockets there. We have an interesting situation where Brazza could potentially attack the, the robo car. I keep wanting to say car bot, uh, but he's opting not to because he doesn't believe the car bot robo car is actually hubba. Reason why the, the robo car was rather suicidal in his actions, it behaved differently than he figures hubba would behave. And so he's not going to attack it, uh, Partially because, well, mostly because the weapon he has to attack it with 
would then be, um, I think, disabled after he used it. And he wants to kind of reserve that for Hubba, which is either, in his mind, the spider bot or the heli bot. Tinkerbell is attacking the spider bot with her EMP blaster. Normally that would be just 1d6, but since she has this power-up ability, it's gonna be 2d6, and she has to get a four or higher in order to do her special disable ability. And she did not get it, so the spider bot's okay. And that's gonna allow the spider bot to counterattack. Um, not really counterattack, but just attack. Let's see, I think the spider bot is gonna to wanna to attack the rocket bot there. And the rocket bot is going to take, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 with a guided missile, so that'd be 1d6. Let's see if he has any, I don't think he has any extra things. Nope. 1d6 against the spider bot versus, or versus the rocket bot. I guess he'll just go ahead and roll it. He has to get a nine minus eight. Oh, that's not actually that bad. It's one or better, okay. One, so he does a damage to the one system, which is going to be, is that the drive? Yep, damage drive, so the rocket bot is gonna be slower. Poor Brezza. Nancy Bear is going to shoot back at the spider bat with her own guided missile, but her chances of success are much fewer. Um, she has to essentially roll a five on this, so one in six chance. And she did not, so the spider bot is okay. So I've just made an executive decision. I've decided that instead of having the survivors move once per round of turns, round of bot turns, I'm going to have them move after each bot moves in order to kind of pick up the pace with the survivors. I'm looking ahead, um, I've got the stack of people who have to go through the outdoor survival process and it's easier for me, it's more interesting for me if they're doing the outdoor survival during some other game than if it's just like a string of outdoor survivals. I, I, um, it reminds me of when I would apply for classes in college, um, or when I would go through the course book. I would pick what I felt was kind of humorous in this sort of um, tedious way, instead of pick what I think would actually be enjoyable. Now I think there's a positive to that because it made me do things that I would not necessarily otherwise do, but at the same time, I'm not looking forward to playing this extended outdoor survival, because outdoor survival is kind of already extended, if you know what I mean. So we're going to try and pick up the pace with the survivors um, and just see what happens. There's a lot of action going on with the robots, which is kind of fun. I'm enjoying that. And I'm enjoying the survivor story, but I'm going to kind of um, hit fast forward, I guess, so to speak, so that we can see how that happens how that goes, and maybe get some more survivors into the mix during Kriegbot. So the Helibot has been trying to kind of get in the rear, behind the line, so to speak, of the Hoverbot and the Tankbot. Brezza has responded, partially because he thinks that this could be Hubba, although he thinks the Spiderbot could also be Hubra, um, by moving up to kind of prevent that from happening. Make sure there's some firepower on the rear portion of the line, so to speak. There's only three people on each side, so there's not much of a line, but it's still, there's facing is a big part of this game, and firing arc is a big part of this game, so that, that matters. Um, in the meantime, we have Junior, who made it to another base. He's doing pretty well. I'd, I'd say he's probably doing the best among them. Uh, Smiley is trying to get her way over to this point from here, from, she was here, right there. Trying to get there, maybe make it through here and then travel this trail down this way, and then 
hopefully get across this this area. Um, Chinky, he's following the river, going up. He can only move one river space per turn, so he's going kind of slow and steady. And Cupid Doll is just kind of hanging out on this water spot, hoping she doesn't die. We're about to embark on our firing phase of the game. Let's check back, check in with our survivors. Um, Junior's made it to an, yet another outpost. He's hit three now. He's doing pretty well. I think he's probably going to make it to the end and go on to careers. Uh, Chinky keeps following the river. He's really hungry, but he's okay on water. Um, Cupid Doll, she had a problem where she got something that made her lose something on here, probably water, which set her back. So she's going to have to sit on this water space for even longer in order to get the strength to kind of try and traverse over to here to get to this outpost. That's what she's trying to do. And then um, Smiley, she's just finished with her time with this deer in this puddle and is getting ready to move on. Um, looking at the robots here, the robocar is trying to get out of the way so it can reboot and get rid of all that disable marker. Um, everyone else, let's see, the spider bot is not going to be able to attack. Tank bot isn't either. I think it's just going to be... Oh, I think the, the tank bot can attack the robocar if it's within range because the robocar is still painted. That's what's going on. And the robocar was out of range, so instead, Dancing Bear revealed her unmanned aerial vehicle and launched it in order to make this helibot painted, which should help either the rocket bot or the tank bot in shooting the helibot in the future. The turn's movement is all done. Dancing Bear is kind of stuck as a, a turret, so to speak, uh, just trying to kind of keep a defensive position. The rocket bot and the helibot are about to square off, just shoot at each other, basically. The spider bot is hiding behind this forest. Um, the hover bot is still pursuing the car, the robo car, but the robo car was safe because it was behind these woods, and so was able to reboot and thus get rid of all the disabled markers. Looking at our uh, survivors here, um, Chinky did manage to make it to this base. He wasn't able to get to this one because of the movement rules of the game. Junior seems still to be home free, and Smiley seems to be doing pretty well as well. Chinky is still, or not Chinky, um, Cupid doll, she's still sitting here trying to get enough movement potential to make it to this base here. Bruzza gets to attack first with his rocket bot. He's using a Gatling gun and electrothermal chemical ammo, and he's going to use his defense action to um, add 1d6 to the long range of that. So that's going to be 2d6, and he gets to attack twice. And does it? Yep, twice. Okay, it's got to hit a seven or better, which is not very easy. Five, he gets to re-roll. Four, so he hits the first time. And does that do anything else? Ignore super steel. That's about it. Okay, so you can pick the, five, the four location or the zero location on the helibot. Um, what's this location? That's not something you can normally hit. Uh, well, he's going to hit the zero location for sure and reduce its speed to three. That would be huge for him. Then he's going to roll again. Two and a one. That's not going to be enough to do anything. Oh, no, it has a new silhouette because its silhouette is three and is... Do you have anything special? Nope. All right, so that's going to be another hit at the one location or the two location. I think he'll hit the two location here and damage whatever that primary weapon is because that seems more problematic than whatever this little box is over here. The Helibot's going to respond by using its special uh, power whatever. 
thing to attack twice with the particle beam accelerator. That's going to bring it to empty, um, but it gets to attack twice at 3d6, and it does two damage if it doubles up on a location. So it's going to roll 3d6 twice, and that's a 9. That's going to be enough to hit once, and we're going to re-roll the 5 there, another 5. That's Two. So we have two, four, and zero. Um, all right. Probably damage the. Where's the four location? That's that one. Two, four, and zero. What's this? Is that the pilot? Two, four, zero. Oh. I'm going to hit the. The drivetrain seems to be a good thing to hit. Could get rid of these this art this uh, electrochemical stuff, but I think it's gonna it's gonna hit the drivetrain there. All right, roll again, and that one is still gonna hit because the drivetrain went down to two, and so. Just got a choice between one or two. Gonna hit the drivetrain again. So Brezza's about unable to move. The drivetrain gets hit one more time. It's it's incapacitated. That's gonna do it for this episode of the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Let's take a look at just a quick review of what's going on. So we have the. Uh, Tinkerbell in her hoverbot, kind of chasing after the car, robo car here, which just rebooted. So it's uh, it's really okay, except for the damage to the chemical rockets here. Um, our rocket bot and the helibot are kind of facing off, and then the tank bot is kind of uh, dancing bears, just kind of trying to deal with both the helibot and the spider, which is approaching. So she brought the UAV to the same kind of turret location that she's at. Uh, doesn't have a view of the spider right now, but she wasn't able to move, so there we go. Our survivors, we have Junior getting close to the end. They have to get off the west edge. I never mentioned that, I'm sorry. They're trying to get from here to the west edge, <laughs> sorry, without dying. Um, Smiley also getting close, uh, maybe in a bit worse of a position. Chinky kind of going slow and steady, hanging out here right now, hoping to recharge and kind of take the junior route. And then, sadly, Cupid Doll is not doing so well. She's at I and just trying to drink enough water so that she can get across this forest in order to get here. If she gets there, things will look better for her. But until then, she's in trouble. We'll find out next time on the Real People Multigame Solitaire Mega Tournament. Whole bunch of legs combined here. Kriegbot mixed with outdoor survival.